the Let's Master English podcast, and I'm your host, Coach Shane. Hello, everybody. This is Coach Shane. How are you doing? I'm so happy to be back. This is the Let's Master English podcast. I'm going to call this a reboot. Reboot meaning start again. And my goal is to do one every day, at least four days a week, if not five days a week. Four days a week would be really nice. That'd be great. What do you think? Would that be okay? And I'm going to keep the format simple. We're going to have a news story. I'll talk about the news story. We got, of course, Country Shane. He's going to have a fact. Uh, and then I'll chit-chat a little bit more. I'll give you more information about something, probably related to the news story or to Country Shane or maybe something else completely different. Then we'll have a Q&A section, question and answer. And, oh, we've got a great question today. I, I love today's question. And we're going to do something in history. So today is June 3rd, 2023. What are some interesting things that happened on this day in history? And that is going to do it. So this is the outline for the new Let's Master English podcast. Once again, please give me your feedback. Do you like it? Did you enjoy it? Uh, it's really easy to send me an email. The email address, contact, C-O-N-T-A-C-T, at letsmasterenglish.com. Send me an email. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Uh, is like uh, three or four times a week. Is that cool? That's what I'd love to do. The more, the better, right? All right. Uh, without any further ado, let's cut the chit-chat and let's begin. Bedbugs reportedly having a luau on luggage at the Honolulu airport. Intense cleaning activities are in full swing at several gates of Honolulu's airport following reports of bed bug infestations. The State Transportation Department got wind of these pesky critters at one of the Terminal 2E gates on Monday. The report triggered immediate action, with staff cleaning up and removing objects thought to be bug magnets. On Tuesday, a Southwest manager provided a sample of the bed bugs, prompting another round of deep cleaning. This included removing carpets and pest control treatments at gates E5, 6, and 7. These gates were temporarily closed on Wednesday night for further pest control efforts. Over the next three weeks, additional cleanings are planned to nip the problem in the bud. Southwest Airlines reassured passengers that flight operations remain unaffected. Oh my God. So bed bugs. Now I'll talk about what bed bugs are a little bit later, but basically they're this tiny little insect, this little bug uh, that likes to bite people and it's really itchy. And it's just terrible. Bed bugs are no fun. But these bed bugs are not in a bed. Where are they? They're at an airport. That sounds terrible. That means these bed bugs could possibly be flying all over the world for free, bothering people. No, thank you. No, thank you. Did you understand the story? Yeah, that's it. That's it. These bugs are at an airport. Biting people. <laughs> That's what the story is. But there's so much to learn. So we're going to start at the top with the title. Bedbugs reportedly having a luau on luggage at the Honolulu airport. So Honolulu is a big city, the biggest city in the state of Hawaii. And they have, of course, a big airport. Luggage, L-U-G-G-A-G-E, 
Those are your bags that you take when you go on an airplane. But so bed bugs reportedly having a luau. Do you know how to spell luau? I'll spell it for you. L-U-A-U. And the pronunciation luau. And a luau is a Hawaiian word. And it basically means a party. So bed bugs are having a party on luggage at the Honolulu airport. That's what the title says, and it's pretty funny. Let me talk about luau. So if you can imagine Hawaii, you might uh, think about the, the woman in a grass skirt with coconut shell uh, top and a big flower necklace, and they're dancing. That is the idea of a luau. It's a party on the beach. There's a big fire, a bonfire, and they're eating delicious food and fruit, and there's music and dancing. This is a luau, and these bed bugs are uh, having a luau on your luggage at the Honolulu airport. Intense cleaning activities. So they're cleaning really, really hard. Are in full swing at several gates of Honolulu's airport. Now, if you go to an airport and you get on your airplane, where where you actually get on your airplane or get off your airplane, that door that leads to the airplane, it's called a gate. Okay, so intense cleaning activities are in full swing. If something is in full swing, it is really active, like 100%. So intense cleaning activities are 100% happening right now at several gates of Honolulu's airport. Following reports, after reports, after stories of bed bug infestations. Oh, Infestation. Let me spell that for you. I-N-F-E-S-T-A-T-I-O-N. An infestation is a huge number of insects or animals, but usually insects, bugs in one particular place. And if there is an infestation of insects, They usually cause a lot of damage or even disease, Uh, infestation. I'll talk more about that later. So very scary. The state transportation department got wind of these pesky critters at one of the Terminal 2E gates on Monday. So on Monday, the state Hawaii transportation department, you know, they take care of all the transportation in the state. They got wind of these bugs. What does it mean to get wind of something? They learned of something. They heard about the story of these bugs. To get wind of something, to hear about something. The words, the story came to you on the wind. So it's not really official, but somebody called and said, hey, uh, they got bed bugs. And then another person called, hey, uh, they got bed bugs. So they started hearing about These bed bugs. But I didn't say bed bugs. I said pesky critters. If something is pesky, P E S K Y, it is annoying. So sometimes uh, maybe you have a brother or a sister. Maybe your brother or sister is annoying. I have a cat, I have three cats. And I like the cats. I have no problems with the cats, but my wife finds them. To be pesky. They're pesky cats. <laughs> Annoying cats. I like my cats. Uh, and the other word was critters. C-R-I-T-T-E-R-S. And critters is just another name for a creature. In other words, an animal or, again, an insect. In this case, we're talking about insects, right? So the State Transportation Department got wind of these pesky critters at one of the 
Terminal 2 E Gates on Monday. So Terminal 2 E Gates, that is just the specific location in the airport. It's just one area. The report, the stories about these pesky critters triggered. Triggered is a great verb, T-R-I-G-G-E-R-E-D. If something is triggered, something is caused to happen. Okay, so triggered. I'll talk about that again. So the report triggered immediate action. Uh Uh-oh. They got bed bugs at the airport. Go now. Fix the problem now. With staff cleaning up and removing objects, things thought to be bug magnets. What's a bug magnet? (laughs) Things that attract bugs or insects. Do you know what a mosquito is? Mosquitoes, they like to bite you and take your blood. I am a mosquito magnet. There's no question. Mosquitoes love me. They love to come to me and bite me and take my blood, and I hate them. I hate them. But I'm also a cat magnet and a dog magnet. When I walk down the street, uh, if I'm at the park, animals come up to me. They like me. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a critter magnet. All types of critters, <laughs> insects, and animals tend to like me. Yeah, so I, I don't mind the animals, but I, I do not like the insects, the bugs. Are you a magnet of any kind? Maybe, maybe you're a really good-looking guy. You could consider yourself a chick magnet. All the ladies come to you. Or ladies, maybe you're very attractive, and all the men come to you. You are a man magnet or a stud magnet is that a good thing or a bad thing i don't know (laughs) continuing on tuesday a southwest manager and southwest is the name of an airline company okay a southwest manager provided a sample of the bed bugs so they got one of the bed bugs and they sent it to i don't know the government or some Laboratory, I have no idea, but he got a sample. He got one of the bed bugs prompting, causing another round of deep cleaning. So on Monday, they were already doing the deep cleaning. Then on Tuesday, a guy from the airline said, This is one of the bed bugs. So on Tuesday, they did it again. Another round of deep cleaning, really serious, hardcore cleaning. Like what? This included. Removing carpets. Wow. And pest control treatment at gates E5, 6, and 7. So pest control treatment means they called in a professional bug guy. And he brought chemicals and sprays and he was spraying everything to kill the bed bugs. These gates were temporarily closed on Wednesday night for further pest control efforts. So Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, they were cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. And Wednesday night, they actually closed some of those gates, E5, E6, and E7. Over the next three weeks, additional cleanings, more cleanings, are planned. They will do more to nip the problem in the bud. And this is a great expression, to nip something in the bud that simply means to stop something at an early stage to stop something before it gets really 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 bad okay that's the idea to nip something in the bud nip means to cut and a bud b-u-d imagine this you have a rose bush you're growing roses outside And the rose, before it becomes a flower, it's got like a little ball on the top. And then eventually that ball will open and we see the beautiful red flower. Okay? That ball is a bud. So if you cut the bud, you will prevent the rose from the flower from opening and being beautiful. So if you have a rose bush, 
Do you want to nip the bud? Probably not. This is an idiom, and we use it a lot, though. So if you have a if you if you're in your house and suddenly you see an ant, are you going to ignore the ant? Some people will. If you ignore the ant, about two days later you'll see three ants, and then you'll just kill them. But you do nothing, and then about a week later you see thirty. Ants. You see ants all day long. Now you've got a serious problem. You have an infestation. So as soon as you see one ant, you better stop the problem. You better nip the ant problem in the bud before it gets too serious. That make sense? All right, last sentence. Southwest Airlines reassured passengers, oh, passengers, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, reassured passengers that flight operations remain unaffected. All the airplane, you know, the, 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 all the flights are not canceled. Don't worry. They're not delayed. There's no cancellations. Don't worry. You can still fly with Southwest Airlines. And that, my friend, is the story. So we learned a lot of great ex, uh, expressions here. Full swing. If something is in full swing, it is very active. We could also say in full gear or at full tilt. Yeah. Or simply in full operation. Infestation. A huge number of bugs that cause problems. Another word for infestation, plague. P-L-A-G-U-E. Or swarm. S-W-A-R-M. Scary. To get wind of something is to learn or to hear about something unofficially. So simply to get wind of something, to hear about something, to discover something, to find out about something. Pesky, annoying, troublesome, irritating, bothersome. Critters. This is a, a basic name for any type of creature. An animal or an insect. Triggered to cause something to happen. Other words very similar to triggered. Sparked. Prompted. Bug magnets. Things that attract bugs or insects. I am a mosquito magnet. Uh, my wife? Uh, what is my wife? Yeah, I think my wife is a mosquito magnet too. Not Jimmy. Jimmy seems to be fine. Oh, Jimmy's a dirt magnet. D-I-R-T. He's a dirt magnet. If there's dirt anywhere, it comes to Jimmy. Jimmy's always, he's always dirty. Uh, Jimmy's my little boy. <laughs> to nip something in the bud, to stop something before it gets big, especially to stop something before it gets bad. Okay? So some synonyms for nip in the bud to halt, to put a stop to. And finally, unaffected. Something that is unaffected is unchanged. It's untouched. It's unaltered. All right? So I'm going to read the story to you one more time, a little bit faster this time, and then I think Country Shane is coming up. Let's listen one more time. Bed bugs reportedly having a luau on luggage at the Honolulu airport. Intense cleaning activities are in full swing at several gates of Honolulu's airport following reports of bed bug infestations. The state transportation department got wind of these pesky critters at one of the Terminal 2 E gates on Monday. The report triggered immediate action with staff cleaning up and removing objects thought to be bug magnets. On Tuesday, a Southwest manager provided a sample of the bed bugs, prompting another round of deep cleaning. This included removing carpets and pest control treatments at gates E5, 6, and 7. These gates were temporarily closed on Wednesday night for further pest control efforts. Over the next three weeks, additional cleanings are planned to nip 
the problem in the bud. Southwest Airlines reassured passengers that flight operations remain unaffected. Where education and entertainment come together. Let's master English. Do it. How you doing, everybody? This is Country Shane, and I'm bringing you the facts. Ooh, I'm already feeling itchy. Despite their name, bed bugs can be found in a variety of locations, not just beds. They've been discovered in movie theaters, no thank you, airplanes, oh my god, and even inside books at libraries. No more reading for me. <laughs> thank you very much, Country Shane. Oh my god, you can find bed bugs in books at the library? That's terrible. So what is a bed bug? What is a bed bug? A bed bug is a small, flat insect that eats human blood and animal blood. They love blood. They're usually reddish brown in color and about the size of an apple seed. Okay, bed bugs are famous for hiding in mattresses or furniture and coming out at night to bite people while they sleep. They don't fly, but they can move quickly over floors, walls, and ceilings. And these bites can cause itching. But luckily, fortunately, bed bugs are not known to spread disease. <sighs> yeah. So what happens if you get bed bugs? Let's say you went to Honolulu, you're at this airport, and suddenly you realize, oh my God, I think I have bed bugs. <laughs> what are you going to do? Well, first of all, make sure that they are bed bugs, okay? Again, they're really small, reddish brown bugs. Uh, so you got you to gotta make sure it's a bed bug because it could just be a mosquito or something else. Could be a spider, okay? Uh, so make sure it is a bed bug. If you verify that it is a bed bug, the first thing you need to do is wash everything. All your bedding, your sheets, your blankets, your pillows, even your curtains on your windows and the clothes that you wear. And if you have a teddy bear, you got to wash the teddy bear too. Hot water and then dry them on like really hot heat. You want to vacuum your bed and you want to vacuum your room very carefully. Clean, 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 clean. Unfortunately, there's a really good chance you're going to need a professional, meaning you have to call pest control. Okay. And a pest control, another word for pest control, an exterminator. Exterminator, like the Terminator, I'll be back. Exterminator. These guys and ladies are professionals who kill bugs. So you might have to call them. They have special chemicals. Uh, and then after you do everything, just watch. Make sure they're really gone because they could come back. Yeah. Bed bugs. I've never had to deal with bed bugs so far. Knock on wood. But I've heard about people that have. They say it's a very tough battle but uh, with patience and persistence and lots of cleaning it is a battle that you can win and you know that's kind of like learning English sometimes you know learning English is a battle right and it seems impossible but with me with coach Shane and with my lessons and with my podcasts and with consistency you your success is guaranteed <laughs> It's time for some questions and answers. Oh, I got such a great question today. And this actually comes from one of my DDM VIP members. They said, please explain the difference between cover the news and cover up the news. Cover, C-O-V-E-R. Cover the news and cover up, phrasal verb, cover up the news. And, oh, it's such a good question. These two phrases... Although they seem similar in appearance, 
Actually, they have very different meanings. So cover the news. This phrase is used when a reporter or a news organization like CNN reports on a story or event. So, for example, uh, the TV station sends a reporter to some event and the reporter is there to cover the news. He just tells the story. He tells what's happening. They are providing information and updates about the event to the public. So the reporter is like a messenger, relaying what's happening to people who cannot be there. He's just giving us information. That is to cover the news. However, to cover up the news means to hide to suppress, S-U-P-P-R-E-S-S, or even obscure, O-B-S-C-U-R-E, the truth about a story or event, to hide the truth about an event. Really different. This might involve not reporting certain facts. So you're giving the story, but you're not giving all of the information. And by doing that, you're giving misinformation or false information or misleading information. And this is, do you remember Donald Trump? This is what he called fake news. They give you the news, they report the news, but they're not telling you everything, right? That's the idea. So to cover up the news means to not tell you the news, or at least to not tell you all of the information about the news. What an excellent question, and hopefully you understand to cover the news, that's a good thing. But to cover up the news, that, my friend, is a bad, is a, it's a bad thing. So in essence, cover the news is like shining a spotlight on something, while cover up the news is more like throwing a blanket over it to keep it dark. Today is June 3rd, 2023. What happened in history? In 1965, we had the first American spacewalk. On this day, Edward H. White II became the first American astronaut to walk in space during the flight of Gemini 4. It was an amazing moment for the United States in the space race. Can you imagine stepping outside of your spacecraft, floating in space with nothing but a rope, a tether, T-E-T-H-E-R, connecting you to your spaceship? Uh, that sounds a little scary. Would you do it? Would you float outside your spaceship? Uh, no thanks, but it happened today in 1965. Uh, in 1989, something happened in China, but I have a lot of people in China who listen to this, so I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> uh, but I do have some good stuff. In 1937, that was a long time ago, 1937, the Duke of Windsor marries. What? Oh, uh, yes. Edward VIII, the Duke of Windsor. He was the king. He famously abdicated the British throne in 1936. He gave up being the king of England in 1936. Why? To marry Wallace Simpson. Who is this woman? Oh, she's an American. But not only was she an American, she was divorced. Oh, scandal. But on June 3rd, 1937, they got married in France. And it truly is a tale of love, right? Aw, and uh, yeah. In order to marry that woman, he had to give up being king. Good for you, Duke of Windsor, Edward VIII. I'm happy. And finally, in 2004, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, the movie, was released. It was the third film in the very, very successful Harry Potter franchise series of movies and books 
Uh, it was released in the UK on June 3rd, 2004. Of course, the movie, based on J.K. Rowling's novel, was really eagerly anticipated by fans worldwide, and it was a huge hit at the box office. So many people bought tickets. Did you? Uh, this event marked another magical moment in the journey of Harry Potter, the boy wizard. And uh, yeah, you know what? I actually read, I think, the first two Harry Potter books when they came out. And I was an old guy. Well, not old, old, but, you know, I enjoyed them. That was fun. I think I saw the first movie, but I don't think I saw any movies after that. What about you? Did you read uh, the books? How many books did you read? Did you watch the movies? How many movies did you watch? Are you a Harry Potter fan? Yeah. So whether it's a uh, space event or a royal romance or wizarding adventures, June 3rd certainly has its share of interesting and entertaining historical events. Ba -ba -dum -bum -bum. Well, folks, that is all the time we have for today's episode, our reboot of the Let's Master English podcast, we talked about a lot of different things. Bed bugs in Hawaii. Great questions and answers. Well, one question, great answers, though, right? Good answer, good answer. Learned all about uh, history. History, yeah, June 3rd. And I hope that you enjoyed our journey and learned some valuable English while listening to this podcast. If you have learned something new today or if you maybe laughed don't keep it to yourself. Please share the podcast with a friend. And remember, mastering English is not a destination. It's a journey, and every step counts. And this is another step on your journey to mastering English. So I want, you to, I want to remind you all, if you don't already have it, please sign up for my free newsletter at letsmasterenglish.com. Right now, as of June 3rd, we're sending out the newsletter every Sunday. Sunday night, actually, for some of you, it's Monday. Um, and uh, it has lots of tips and lessons and updates and quizzes that will also help you on your English learning journey. And there's more. You can also get my free lessons at letsmasterenglish.com. And if you like the first few lessons I send you, tell me. Email me. And I will let you try two VIP lessons and two weeks of live classes for free. Insane. I'm the only guy that does that for free. Absolutely. But that's it for today. This is Coach Shane signing off. Until next time, keep practicing, stay curious, and remember, together, let's master English. Oh, and keep your eyes peeled for those pesky bed bugs. <laughs>